Okay. Hi. I'm going to find this one here so that I can read your comments. Give me one sec. That hello. Oh, there we are. Haha. <laughs> Found us. Make sure the volume's down. There we see. My kids use my iPad. Okay. Jen is here. She'll be over in a minute. But tonight we are going to talk easy piecing grids. And these come in a variety of sizes. But we'll wait one more minute while people show up. But uh, hey, Susie. Nice to see some of our evening regulars join us tonight. Um, sorry, my brain is a fuddle. We've been frantically filling orders for all of the mystery three and five yard bundles we all have ordered, which has been kind of fun and kind of stressful trying to pick something out that you would hopefully love, but it's been fun. Uh, that sale goes through the weekend, so that's still tonight and tomorrow. I will shut it off when I get to work Monday morning, though. So now would be your time. Hey, Lisa. Hi, Rachel. Um, but tonight, easy piecing grids. If you don't know what they are, they're not papers. Hello, Laura from Pittsburgh. Happy Easter to you, too. When I get done with this tonight, I'm going to go home and fill Easter eggs and Easter baskets and do all the stuff for my kids, which is going to be more work, but awesome. Because you know what? They need a sense of normalcy right now. Because life ain't normal. Nope. Okay. So your easy piecing grids. These are made by 10 sisters. Handcraft. Out of... She's out of Utah, right? Mm -hmm. She's close. That's what I know. Um, Carmen and her husband. They're very nice people. Anyway. So the biggest size is... It's interfacing, guys. This is one-sided, fusible interfacing. That's all it that's is. That's been printed on. Okay? There's nothing more fancy about it than that. It's a very lightweight interfacing, so it's like the Pellin featherweight yeah. or sheer weight. Maybe a little it. heavier than sheer weight, it's but not pretty, much. It's pretty fine interfacing, so it doesn't make your project bulky. Right. Hey, Sabina. Anyway, so the biggest size is, these are labeled by their finished size, not by the size. Right. So this, the this is their salad. biggest one, so it's labeled as two and a half. Or two, two it's inch labeled finished. as two inch finished. You would use two and a half mm -hmm. inch squares. And then the next biggest size is their one and a half inch finished, which starts with a two inch square. This is the one inch finish, which is what I'm going to play with tonight. I didn't grab Sarita's Idaho. Oh, go get Man. it. She failed. Um, and then their newest one, and this one's fun, and we'll show you with Sarita's Idaho if you haven't seen it before, is their half inch finished. And this starts with one inch squares. Now, starts everything starts with one. So starts with one inch squares. They finish at half an inch. Half. That is an inch. the entire Idaho quilt put onto an easy piece and grid. Oh, hello to me. And Kim in Melbourne. And actually, she uh, ooh, she added to our Idaho quilt to make, make it big a enough little to bit fill bigger. it up. So it's um, it's definitely it's fun. you can do all sorts of things, but it doesn't have to be all squares. You'll see, even in this, she's got a couple half square triangles. Well, and it's an even the piece corner, the little tiny heart. snowballed corner to make a heart. Um, so you can use half square triangles. There's a lot of patterns to go with right. uh, their grids. She's got pattern books. She's also got a bunch of free patterns on her website. Right. Um, lots of options. So there's lots of stuff you can do. Probably the most common that I see done is her trip around the world pattern, which if you're going to do a trip around the world, this is the easiest way to do it. Oh, heck yeah. By a long shot. So, uh, or you like can the put grannies. multiple panels together to do a quilt. Yes. Yeah. The, the project, project we're going to do tonight, yeah. you, we're using two panels. Two so we'll show yes, you how we're going to talk about the quilt on the table. Yes. So it's fun. Um, anyway, hello, Sandy and Suzanne. Okay, I'm going to move this guy over here. So those are our grids. I am going to be playing with the one inch finished tonight. Our project for tonight, we did create a kit for it. Did you put it in the description? I didn't. I'll put it up there when I'm done. I can't go Maybe I can now. yell at Saria over here and see if she'll do it. Um, but, so we are creating a kit for the project for tonight. It is going to use the one and a half inch finished size. So it's going to be slightly bigger. And the project then will finish 
Uh, what did we say? 19 and a half by 27. Yep. But so good wall hanging it's size. It's a good wall hanging size. Hang it in your window. Oh, you already have one. Fun. No, I already got one. Where'd you go? I just got you an iron. I'm You're just throwing tired. stuff. Man, I love Okay. Um, Jen did do a class on this in the shop. Right. Shortly. Sorry, the, the wind is crazy, and so our doors are going like this. So are another lot. An amazing amount of people trying to come in and pay for gas today. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. That's what that was. Oh. Um, anyway, she did this spool of thread. This is a free pattern, also from uh, Ten Sisters. Ten Sisters they're, website. They're on our resources tab that yes. we keep sending you Under guys Under resources, too. there are those. Um, so this um, is a single. I always wish, yeah. Yeah. Susie will have a project kit for tonight. And I will be coming in Monday morning to cut all of this. Anyway, um, so but this we is do a single panel with a, a with border. A border. And we do have one more kit left for that one. It's called Easy Piecing Grid Class Kit. And it's only $19.99. So if you're interested in trying this out, this one's only $20. Uh, the one for tonight is going to be $34.99. And it's because it's really scrappy. Super scrappy. And so it's going to be awesome. had to cut more fabric. Right. There it goes. Three to put the link in the comments. Good. So you can find it there. This is going to be one of our projects for next week. Three to finish hers Three today. Three to finish hers. We and just took it, of it so. off the long arm in the blue colorway. This is from Robin Pickens. This is the pattern. It's called Town Square Garden. She's got it in two colorways, the blue and the cream. You'll see this kit is for the cream. That is what I will be making when we do this next week. Um, Jen, Jen, Sarita made it in the blue because it's blue is Sarita's signature color. The blue is gorgeous. Um, there are two sizes. One's 54 and a half square, one's 35 and a half square. This is clearly the 35 and a half. And that's what I'll be making, but it also comes in. Well, you can, you, it comes in. It can be made, made in, in 54 and a half. A larger size. But I do have one kit for Perfect. the, my colorway, this one. For the one I'm going to do next week cut already because I had to cut two and I made me mine. Right. Anyway, so it's right there. It's called Town Square Garden and we're going to do it next week. next week. We'll get next week's class schedule up. Hopefully tomorrow, but tomorrow might be crazy. Right. It's, it's Easter. Easter. So. And I have kids. It might be Monday. Yeah. Oh, don't be offended <laughs> if I'm a little late with these these days. Okay. Right. So for tonight. Oh, okay. Move this. Move your stuff, Jen. I'm going to make another bag, guys, because... Oh, Minky um, Kim. Minky Kim came out with a new pattern called the Olive Case, and it's stupid cute, and it'll be cute in these oranges from um, Abby Rose. So I need another project like a hole in my head, but this is coming home with me today. Oh, wait, good luck. Um, yeah, getting kids put to bed and watching something is very hard. <laughs> good luck. <clears throat> um. All right. Anyway. So I, this is a two panel project, okay? And you can trim right up to the edge of your panel. Although you will see on this side, <laughs> I'm gonna say the left, but it's the right because I'm upside down. Um, there's a half an inch right there. Don't trim that off. That's to attach the panels. Yep, you don't have to use it. It's usable you interfacing, so you can attach so you'll the see panels. On this one, I left it on that side so we can attach them together so that they go together just right. Mm -hmm. So I got a little ahead so that we could hopefully finish this tonight. So we'll see. So this is the pattern, guys. It's one page. <laughs> it's pretty simple. <laughs> you can see where it lines up, and it tells you how many squares to cut. You can do it in just the four colors, but I don't like to cut a thousand squares unless I'm going to do something fun. So mine is scrappy. And because we have these adorable new house at-home prints from Barney and Camille, and they were just dying to be used. Right. So these are my two panels. You will see I sewed one direction and it's got shrunk a lot. But I wanna show you how this works. Okay, so this is our fusible interfacing. And you'll notice I don't have all 13 stripes on that block. Okay, so we're gonna lay out the last two rows. This is not hard. Do you want the other one? Okay. Oh, sure, why not? That way you can just stretch them. Oh wait, not cover your squares. <clears throat> so we, here's my square, guys. This is really, really basic. It's totally rocket science. I cut Ready? one and a half inch squares. Well, the one thing I want to check, see, good thing I checked, is where this one ends up so I'm not matching because that this square is going to match right here. But I just want to make sure they're not the same. Okay. And we lay out our row. In fact, I'm going to lay out both rows. 
and you'll see if there's a grid on this stuff and you want to lay out inside the grid and you want to be careful when you're cutting wow i failed there that's okay um because i was just saying something if anything cut a little scant yes. versus cutting large because you're going to be folding on that grid line, and if you're overlapping it with two different fabrics, it's going to get bulky. So, where these are one and a half inch squares, um, mine are cut almost exactly one and a half inch, and they're fitting inside the grid because this is made to be folded. Right. So, it works out okay. That's a little bit Just, salvage. Just, you know, when I say scant, don't, don't cut it down to like one and a quarter. Yeah, no. Make sure it's one and a half. But yeah. not, you're not doing a pattern? Okay. No, I'm not doing a pattern. Okay. I'll, so, I'll um, I'm just going to lay out these two rows. I laid out all the other ones earlier so that you don't have to watch me do this because this is actually the most time consuming part of this whole process. It is. And, and it's, you know, this one's a pretty straightforward pattern. We did run into some problems when I did the class last and we made the thread spool because sometimes people have a hard time visually transferring one to the other, you know, saying, okay, well, this is where I'm at. So, so it's kind of like so counted cross stitch. It is like counted cross Count, stitch. Mark it so off. So what we what came up with for that is mark it off. When you have it placed, cross it out. Yeah. Now for some, this one's a really simple pattern, but for this one, um, a couple people went all over the place, and that was fine. You know, luckily this is something where you can peel it off and put it back on. Yeah, it's just interface. You can only do that so many times though, and then it loses its sticky. And you'll notice there's a couple half square triangles on mm -hmm. here too. So don't feel like this product it's only confines you to just squares because it doesn't. No. Okay, I'm going to pull out my handy dandy pressing sheet. There are a lot of pressing sheets you can buy on the market. Which are wonderful. And they're wonderful. But mine comes out of my kitchen. It's and it's called parchment paper. Okay? Because <clears throat> it works great. And right. I just do it. And I have parchment paper <laughs> sheets. I have anyway. Tons. So we just lay it on top. You don't want to iron directly on this because there is adhesive and it will transfer to your iron right. and then it gets all gunky. So you do want a surface for pressing. Right. I'm just going to get these adhered to the... And the thing is, they might come loose a little bit as you go. And I turn around and because I had a couple that got a little loose in transit. Where did they go? On this one. Just press it again. And you just press it again and iron it back down and did I get them all? You'll know if you didn't get them all because they'll start peeling off with the paper. Right. <laughs> oh, see, I got a loose one in the middle yeah, right one there. Loose one. Take care of it. So let's see. That's all like Okay, you guys. But honestly, laying this out. Oh, hey, Chrissy, you're good. You're not really late. Laying this out is the most time consuming part. Okay. A piecing together one of these grids. But it really is as simple as putting a square into a square into a square and ironing and it down. ironing it down. But sorry, I'm breaking my rules. But use a pressing sheet just so that you don't it was up at the top. See, I knew there was a corner that was loose. Get your sheet. These had to travel from my house. So Right, and you're this wind. Oh, yeah. Goodness. Hey, Chris, it is that easy. It really is. You lay out your squares and you press. Right. And then we're gonna sew. And then we sew. So the beauty of, I'm going to show you this. The beauty of having these tiny gaps between the squares is that when I go to sew this together, it folds and, and it automatically, doesn't matter which direction you do. I know, but you did it that way on here. Oh, whatever. Which way did I do it on there? Because, oh, no, you sewed along the right. You were right. I did the top. You were right. I was crazy. Wrong. Okay. So you've got those little gaps and that dotted line. And you just drop it and fold it, okay? Right. Now yeah. it's folded perfectly on that quarter of an inch. And this is when I like to trim it so I don't have all this extra stuff on the edges. But you don't have to trim it either. Nope. And then you're going to sew a quarter inch seam on there, okay? It's going to be really tricky. Ready? Go. Just and she's going to sew those quarter inch seams. And I'm going to move this for a minute. Right. Ow. Oh, sorry. She's going to drop stuff on my feet. I'm going to drop stuff on her. Um... Okay, while she does that, I'm going to show you what I did, and I'm going to come closer. So, I already, I don't know, can they see this? I already did that one direction on this. So you can see how all my squares are now rectangles and they're squatty. 
Okay. They can see that. Perfect. So I went one direction already. So don't. Okay. To start with, after you sew a row over like this, don't press it. Okay. Just leave it alone. Don't press it. Leave it alone and just fold it over and sew the next one and go all the way down the panel. Okay. Because if you press it, you're going to have to repress stuff the other direction and that is always harder than it should be. So don't press it yet. Right. Just see, she finished one. Ready? And, and now on. she'll fold the next one. Don't fold it all the way under. Make sure you don't get, touch get that it, Get it out of the way. And just keep going. And she'll go all the way down that panel. All the same direction. The same direction. No, I find the part I folded, you'll notice I turned it around. The part I folded, I like to keep on top so that I don't catch she it. She knows she's not catching it. And it's still not bad as you get down to the bottom. You'll also notice that because we needed 13 stripes for this project, we are not using the 14th row. That's okay. You don't have to use the whole thing. All right, trim it off. Okay. So after she sews all those rows, and I'm going to make her do it for a minute, you need to clip seams. And I know that sounds really tedious, but it's a whole lot less tedious than piecing a thousand tiny squares together two at a time. Okay. And I'll show you why. So I've already done it on mine, on this panel, and you'll see that the clean seams all got clipped in the interfacing right there. Don't go through your stitch, go right up close to the stitch. And because it's interfacing and it'll tear easy and stuff, you can just push it right down and get it nice and flat when it comes to pressing it. And we'll show you how to do that here in a minute. After Jen still got sews this whole panel. Right. But the reason you do that is so that you can alternate your seams and nest them. Okay, so I've already done that on this whole panel and they're all nice and alternated. If you don't do it, you end up like this and then you're sewing all this bulk together all the way down and trying to press it open. And if you've ever listened to Jen and I talk, bulk means precision goes away. And so this is a step worth doing to keep, the whole point of this to me is that my seams are all perfect or close to perfect. You know, and I have right. all my one inch squares ending up exactly one inch. The benefit of the of this product is it helps with precision. Yes. So and if you, you if you skip this step, you get lazy. You lose precision. So you do go through and I just take my little perfect scissors and you just clip each of them right there, right close. We'll show you in a minute. And then you're gonna press alternating. I find it easier to press along my sew line. And so I just go back and forth and work my iron down and press them all open. But because I've done that, once she finishes sewing, sewing this, we'll just turn it over and sew the other direction. Can you see this? And then we sew this way and then that panel's done. And that's all there is to it. So once she finishes this, I will show you that process and then show you what it looks like finished because I want you guys to see this finished product because it turns out really cool and um it really is just that easy as far as making things like this so we'll just keep going but ask your questions yeah if you have questions ask what it is Debbie you're good nobody's late yeah these are all getting posted to YouTube yeah, these are Jen's got I think five or six of them so far up on YouTube they take like 10 hours to upload, so it takes a minute. But they're also on there. Okay, Christy, different size squares. You did the one inch on your pillow, which I should post a picture of because it was so cute. Adorable. Oh my goodness. The biggest size starts out at two and a half inch and finishes at two inch, which is this. And then there's the starts out at two inch and finishes at one and a half. And, and what I'm doing right now starts off at one and a half and finishes at two. And then, <laughs> Chris, I feel like we're a bad influence on you. <laughs> I love you, but I feel like we're a bad influence. <laughs> anyway, so um, the kit for this one is going to be the size up from this. So they will finish at one and a half inch square. Okay. I decided to do the small one mostly because I love tiny piecing and because um, it's smaller to work with here so I feel like it's easier for me to show you right. and keep it right here on the table. Even these <laughs> even these big ones though, they're not bad because 
as the panel, as the square size goes up, there are fewer squares on each panel. Right. So okay. most, all but one of the panels are what three ninety nine. Yes. And one of them is two ninety nine. One's two ninety nine. Um, the one inch panel has way more squares right. on it. Oh, open it up. But that's because, well, they're tiny. Right. It doesn't take as much surface area to get a lot of squares. So the one inch panel is what? Let's look at the numbers. It is 18 by... See, guys, isn't that fun? Look how it's shrinking. 28. Okay, and this is 9 by 14. So it's... How much time would we spend piecing this? Honestly. We'd spend so much time piecing this. And I spent an hour getting everything ironed on this morning before I left my house. So it's really, really... <sighs> A time saver, I would say, mm -hmm. and a definitely, yeah, definitely, definitely helps with precision. And um, like I said, uh, Carmen's got a lot of great projects with this. And if you guys don't follow Carmen on Instagram and Facebook, uh, she has a giveaway going because of this live tonight. Yeah. So you should. Uh, on Instagram, it's just Ten Sisters Handcraft. So go find her. Find her post about this. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. Uh, she's really nice. We like her a lot. Right. Jen's almost done piecing the other half of this thing. Like I said, well, I did halfway piecing. Halfway piecing. But Liz is gonna half. Liz is gonna clip it while I start sewing the other I'll half. I'll clip Here it while you do the other one. But um, yes, Jamie, we are selling a kit. It's in the comments here somewhere. Sarita posted it. It's called the Faithful Flag. Easy. A faithful fly kit, I think is what it's called. So we are selling a kit for this project. Like I said, it's gonna end up a little bit bigger. The finished kit's 19 and a half by 27 uh, finished size. Uh, the binding will be the blue diagonal stripes because if you know me, you have to have a stripey binding. No, and I it, think it doesn't have to be stripey, it could be gingham. It could be gingham, maybe. On Especially if it's on a bias. Um, but if it's stripey, it makes me happy for binding. So that's just what especially it is. a diagonal stripe. Especially a diagonal stripe. I mean, straight stripes are fine, but diagonal are just a step You're just beyond. better. So we You're just, just go that better. way. So that's what the binding will be in the kit. The kit will feature the picture on it is the picture from the pattern, right? Because nope. I clearly don't have this done yet. To post a picture of it. <laughs> showing you, it to you. You haven't updated it tonight. Right now. Right, this is as far as we've gotten. Maybe I'll put it on the long arm before I leave tonight and fold it. I fold tiny things on the long arm because I have one. Right, right. otherwise this is totally an at-home on your domestic this is project. This domestic quilting project. Um, but I will do it because I'm I don't know, you're going to have to finish spoiled. that big one that's on the long arm. It's fine. I'm like, both long arms have big quilts on them right now. So I'll finish the one that's on there and then I'll quilt it tomorrow. Then you can have it. So, Monday. Tomorrow. Monday. When I work on Monday. <laughs> we are taking tomorrow off. If you send messages. Yes. If you contact me on Messenger tomorrow, please be advised that I will probably not respond on Monday. <laughs> because right. I'm said... going to spend tomorrow with my kids and my husband. And that's just... It's just how it is. <laughs> going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> I do love you guys, but I we do need breaks too. So, Jen's almost done. Right? I'm sewing as fast as I can. And she oiled her machine, so it's not a slab. I did. I did a full oiling today. You know what I did leave, though? Tails. And it's driving me crazy. Oh, no. What's wrong with you? I'm trying to be fast. Okay. But it's it's painful. Like, it's bothering me. Every time I look up here, I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all those tails. Okay. But like I said, you don't need a fancy pressing sheet. I know that they get sold all over the place. We, we have sell some. them, too. Um, but if you bake and you own parchment paper, it works great. And you don't need a pressing sheet. Right. Okay? Yes, thank you, Christine. I appreciate that. Did she give you permission? <laughs> yes. Okay. Christine. Yeah, you don't really... I quilted Sarita's Idaho one. Oh, and along, yeah, yeah. Um, I did break a needle. Well, but it's... to be honest, it also had a linen back backing and batting. But it's so tightly woven, I don't think it needs to be quilted if you do the half inch. <laughs> right. I will agree with you. Done. Oh, see, Barbara appreciates the you. Okay, see, so, what? so it just turned into an accordion. Right. Look, look cute. how nice this is. I just flip it. Yeah, even now, to go the other direction, it folds nested. super easy, evenly, and it's all nested. Super. 
super evenly. Super evenly. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to show you where I'm clipping. Just for fun. Just for kicks. So before I press this, there's all of these and her seams. I'm just going to look closely and I'm going to clip right there on the dotted line up close to my seam, okay? So we're just going to do that all along. I know it looks tedious, but it doesn't take very long. Okay. Oh yeah, this goes fast, guys. So, and I would do it right in front of the camera, but I... Your arms might get tired. Get a little self-conscious about that, guys. So, and it's faster this way on a table. See, I just run along and clip, 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 clip. Snips. I'm going to get my tail here because this one's more finished. Oh my gosh. You can get my tails on that one. And I'm going to flip it over so hey, I can Bonnie. see what I've done. That way it doesn't get tucked under accidentally. But yeah, she will probably have that done by the time I've got this clipped and pressed. Is the iron over there on? Did I turn it on? I can't remember if nope. I turned it oh, I turned it off. It's off. Now it's on. And if you have nice, sharp, super pointy scissors, they really help with this part. Right. I'm using the micro serrated perfect scissors, so they're... Awesome. Crazy awesome. Oh my gosh. Seriously, awesome. I left all the tails for you because I know you love them. She's crazy. We kind of hate tails. But I did, I started out chain piecing this. Like I kept putting my ender yeah. on and then so I stopped. So when I was doing do the other one this morning, I still am working on my summer moon block the month. And it's the block that, that I've been on forever is one where there's like 40 or 60 half square triangles for each block and there's three different sizes. And so it, they have been my leaders and enders for I think the last month. I'm <laughs> assembling the blocks now instead of just making the half square triangles. But uh, I got a block almost all assembled This is as my leaders and enders this morning. <laughs> Hang next to me. Hey, it's a great way to... to so, uh, if oh, you ever watch Lori Holt, she always has like one and a half and two inch squares in a basket next to her. And she just sews them together in pairs as leaders and enders on everything she ever does. And then eventually, she does a leader and ender project because she's got all these two and a half inch squares all sewn together. I've done that out of half square triangles. I just made half square triangles. So, uh, and then I did a half square triangle mat. If you're a crazy efficiency person, kind of like I am. Plus, it's fun, you know, you take all your scraps from um, a project and you cut them up into, say, two inch squares or whatever. All right, I want to show you guys what I did here because I'm going to go back and rectify a problem. I got this one caught. It twisted down. I'm just going to take out like six stitches. Yeah, but pay attention to what you're doing. Because there are, you can go through and pin all of this to keep your flaps down if you really, really, if you really, really want, want to. to. I just took out three stitches. And I don't it think up. it's necessary because I think pinning distorts. I think you just need to go slow enough and pay attention. Well, I'm just to using really. It's fingers. It's, it's by feel. That's what my fingers. Yeah, use are your for. fingers. Keep them. Keep the seams where they need to be. And that's as hard as it was to fix that problem. Done. Solved. I'm almost done clipping. So it's well. I've only done three seams, so you're ahead of me. I know, me. but I gotta press it, so no, it's okay. True. In fact, maybe I'll press it over here. Go then we can see it. We'll just do it over here. I'll use a mat. Jen got the ironing board out for me tonight, and I'm not even gonna use it. Well, but I used it for other stuff. That's true. Like Serena's Town Square. Town Square. Town Square. Square. The the, the back of this. Yeah, I pressed it for you. Well, and I pressed the top too because it had been folded up tight. So it's nice to give it a good press. Yep. And then for the back, I seam. Yeah, is this making sense to you guys? Because I know that people see this stuff sometimes and they're like, what is that? And how does that work? And I just want. It's, it's so simple. Hey, Dumma. Dumma, we got your house. It's so Ooh. cute. If you get done, you need to show houses. Yes, I will show houses after I finish pressing this. Or after she finishes seeming that, oh whichever my goodness. one comes first. Like, our collection of houses is 
Jen's putting them all up in the back. In the classroom on mm -hmm. the design walls back there. I'm, I'm pinning them all up next to each other. And they're making her, oh, hi, Sandra from South Carolina. So, uh, yeah, our collection of houses is getting awesome. They're from all over the place. And, you know, some of them are our local, like, regulars. And others are online regulars. Online regulars. And others are new friends. So, um, it's been if, fun. If you don't know about that project, it's our, um, yes, we village. are having fun, Heidi. We always have fun. The day this job stops being fun is the day I quit. Right, right. The, the doors will close when we stop having fun. So, we're still having fun, so good thing. Right. When this isn't enjoyable anymore, I'm, I'm going home. Life's hard these days. This is kind of my escape. I was leaving to come here and my husband's like, going already? And I was like, yep. He's like, you know that if I go to work right now, I will be a happier person tomorrow. And he's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I was like, okay. So we're good. Right. Okay. Okay, you know what? I, like, come to work in my messy hair and my flip-flops, Jennifer. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, do you shop just, here? <laughs> just, just don't look too close when you see me here. Because I know I'm always casual, but I'm a little extra casual these days. Right, right. these days, like, the, the sweats are strong, you know? It's I'm like, oh, we're not even open. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> like, I got up and put my hair in a bun, and then I get here and I realize I didn't brush it first. Yeah. Oh, crap. Yeah. You know? We're doing good. Okay, you guys, I clipped them all. They're all They're clipped. clipped. And ready. We got a little cute accordion happening right here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just gonna actually, now I'm gonna trim it because it's bugging me. All right, this is when I need bigger scissors. Why is there bigger scissors? You want a rotary cutter? Shoot, no, because I don't want to cut Serena's quilt. Well, we could move Serena's quilt. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry. I'll bring it back in just a minute. I mean, that's only like six inches at a time, but still faster than my itty bitty scissors. better than itty bitty scissors. And it doesn't have to be exact, so all good. On this one, I am going to trim off the um, half inch on the far side because it's not getting attached to anything. Right, you only need one fuse. For this one, you only need to fuse on one side. If you're doing one of her, her projects that has like eight panels in it. Guys, look at this. How cute is that? I'm not even using ruler. Sorry, I have two more. Oh, oh there's I'm a good. delay over there. You're being ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's not ridiculous, it's lazy. Call it what it is. <laughs> it's just bugging me to have that extra bulk. I don't like bulk. I haven't made Except that at the grocery store or Costco. That's different. When I'm sewing. Yes. No bulk in sewing. Oh, see? I just had a piece come loose on the end. And I'm going to iron it in a minute so it won't matter. But uh, it doesn't matter as much right now if they come loose because, well, they're right. all sewn together anyway. So, now we have our rows right here. Okay. Right. Let's press it. So we're just gonna go, like I said, we need to go one direction. Which way am I on this one? Let's try and match it up. Is it go on the, what, where does it go? Just, un oh, you mean trim it and give it to you for a second? Yeah, trim it and give it to me for a second. Fine. Oh, wait, I'll take it I right. just wanna make sure that I'm, press, yeah. Ah, just got, look how cute. Oh wait, just wanna make sure I'm going the right way. So this one's going up, so this one's going to go down. That's what I need to know. Because mm -hmm. we lose all efficiency if we start doing it the other way. <laughs> okay, so and you guys, bulk. the first row or two, a little trickier, okay? Because it's going to want to accordion up on you, and you got to kind of pull it out. But I'm depressing from the back so that I'm not going to get any glue on my iron. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm just going to press this row down. And as we get further along, we can come back and it'll flatten out. 
And this is going to reattach this piece down on the end that got loose. Great. Okay. It's handy that way. Now I'm going to go the other way. It's really fancy. I do like that you turned it around rather than like. You can try and try and bring the iron to towards back. you and go the other way. Um, it's easier for me, and especially with how small this panel is, to just just flip it, flip it, and go, turn around. You know, because you know we need to be safe here, not hurt ourselves. Saw Jen's burn from the week or so ago. So much better. Still getting better. It's not it's worth way it. Way better than it was. So you'll see now it looks like it's all like. I don't know, splayed out. It's gonna get there. Don't worry. It's because only part of it's pressed. Like I said, those first couple are the trickiest. And if you didn't quite clip all the way, you can just pull. It'll take care of itself. Stretch a little. And, and, and while she's clipping, yeah, Judy, I, that. we did create a kit for this. I'm cutting them tomorrow morning. Not tomorrow. Monday morning. Um, it's in the size up from this and it's called Faithful Flag Kit. Sarita, I believe, posted a link in the comments. Do you want me to press these to the side or I don't care. alternate? It's up to you. I'm going to press them all the same direction. Jen's going to press that one now that she's finished. Because I beat her sewing it. This iron is a Durabilt travel folding iron from probably the 50s or 60s. Um, it's handy dandy, it gets super hot, the handle folds all the way down, the um, plug some comes out. Some of them the plug comes out, some they don't. And uh, there are a couple different models. These old irons get way hotter than modern irons do. And right. so it makes them really nice for quilting. So we like them. My mom scavenges them, sources them, I'll call it that. Right, um, you sources from all over the place and she cleans them up and we sell them again and they're with little irons. There are two different kinds though, two things to look at. Well, technically there's, yeah. There's a lot of different kinds. Um, you want one with a temperature gauge, not a, a temperature dial, not a voltage dial. Not, it's not voltage, it's a heat. They're heat. A thermo indicator. There's one with a voltage, I think. Yeah, but, but a lot of them just have an indicator to tell you how hot it is. And the only way to cool it off is to unplug it? Yes. And I have one of those at home and it's kind of, if I leave it on for very long, all of a sudden it's like, ah, it's, <laughs> right. you can smell it. So. Right. Those ones aren't the best. Not the best kind. So after I press this, I'm going to turn it over, grab out my handy dandy pressing sheet from my kitchen and press the top. <laughs> we source our sewing supplies from our kitchens. Sometimes. Let's see. You know what? Like. If it's there, it's there. Seriously. Here's the thing. Jen and I have done um, a lot of vinyl work with like heat transfer vinyl. Mm -hmm. And you can use fabric and stuff like that or you can use uh, parchment paper. And right. so we've used parchment paper for adhesive stuff for a long time. Right. And so Years. when it comes to this kind of stuff, we're like, well, you just use parchment paper. Right. That's my that's that's been my pressing sheet with a lot of heat for projects for ever. This is not locked in. There we go. And uh so we just use parchment paper because it's Look, easier. We have half of a flag. That's that's I know, isn't that adorable? It's half of a flag. It's adorable. It's so cute. And it's all patchy, which makes me I happy. know, and I love guys, I love scrappy, like Oh. Although I love, here, here's the control freak in me. I love controlled scrap. But you can't just kind of go scrappy because then you look at things and like these two stripes next to each other are kind of bugging me. Well, I know, but I only have a couple. Anyway, I but um, I won't look at it. No. But I mean, I struggle with scrappy from all over the place. But I love scrappy control within a collection. <laughs> right, collection based scrappy. I have problems. I'm a control freak, and um, right. But I also love scrappy. <laughs> I don't know how those two things work together, but they. Seem but to. they do. We make them work. Uh, we use scrappy all the time. Judy and Chris, you guys scrap can. What? Yeah. You can see it. I can't see it. All right. 
not to press the last bra. And then I'm going to make Jen sew some more. Okay. Back to work. Hold on. We're going to press it from the top. Yes, please. Top press. Just because. See, and now my whole panel fits on my 14 inch <laughs> pressing mat. Right? Yeah. It shrank. Shrunk. Shrinkage. Shrinkage. Anyway. There are words. But. But seriously, you guys, I swear that um, cutting the squares. And laying them out. Right. Is the time consuming part here. Well, yeah. I mean, like, when we were making the thread spool, it was... All right. Because that gets 100% have have pre-cut. I mean, and this one uses too many charms. Yeah, this kit is totally pre-cut. So if you want the last one, the white and the brown are all pre-cut for you. Right. And we'd be happy to send it to a new home. Right. So see, it's going to line up, and it's going to be adorable. But not until I sew it. Right? So give it back. Oh, well, fine. She's going to sew it the other direction. Right. But, see, look how cute. I'm going to show you the back of it so you can see how she did it. Um, you can get really complicated and press your back different directions. She pressed it all one direction, which keeps things simple. Um, there is this edge on here that has some fusible on it that you can leave on to iron put onto the back of that piece to make them line up right just right or because I alternated my seams and I feel confident in my sewing abilities I can just trim that off and nest all my seams and it'll do the same thing so it's up to you whether or not to use that but we'll show but you it how is to handy. use it we'll show you how to use it but we it, will use it you don't have to use it is what I'm mm -hmm. it's all I'm saying but yeah I mean this doesn't even necessarily have to be quilted down because like they're tiny pieces and you've got this interface and holding it together too. Although for being one inch squares, I don't feel like it's really a whole lot stiffer than it would be without the interfacing on it. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit stiffer. I'm going to give it that because clearly it has this extra layer. But this is a pretty lightweight interfacing. So I don't feel like it adds bulk. But for a wall hanging or something like that, I think that it's not a big deal at all um like i said christy made her idaho into a pillow and it's adorable one inch and it's got plenty of structure all by itself because it's all seams back behind those little one inch half inch squares on the front right so you're good i'm gonna show you yeah you think in here this is all seams, so it's like three layers deep is really what this is so it doesn't really have to be quilted. Um, then, oh. I got a couple houses in the mail today while Jen's sewing. I, I got like you. six houses in the mail today and a couple more dropped off. Yes, I am going to put a backing on mine and quilt it and bind it because that's what we do. I do. <laughs> because that's how I am. And then it will probably hang up here forever and I'll never take it home like everything else I make. Eventually, stuff goes home. Like, but we got some fun ones. These ones came from all over. This is Morgan in Kentucky. And we've got uh, Tammy. She's up in McCall, right? I forget. Yep. And Susie. And Susie. And this is Whitney. She's in North Carolina. And Ginger. She's one of our fantastic regulars. She's Lisa Parker. I can't read. Oh, no, that's Marilyn. Marilyn. Oh, that's Marilyn. I love it. And Jen R, she got uh, her Jennifer Ray. Yeah, yeah. Ray. With your Mickey Mouse. I love the Mickey Mouse on your door and your doorknob. We had two different people that use vinyl to put their names on, which I think is awesome. Right. I just and then Delma, she uses it down here. It's adorable. They will get added to our thank you. Thank you. They will get added to our collection in the back. And we will It's turning into quite the village. It's, it's gonna fun. be fun. Remind them how to but yeah, so if you are new to this, the village pattern is on our website under resources and free patterns. It's called the village. Uh, make me one house, chimney, no chimney, up to you. And uh, mail it in, drop it off. We are going to be assembling a village from all the houses everybody sends in and making a quilt that will hang up in the shop and be our commemorative quilt <laughs> of our 
wonderful little experience. Lockdown, whatever you want to call this thing that we're living in these days. This Here. is this is us apparently living through history. He's living know. through history of something. I'm, I'm kind of tired. I love the Mickey one, history. and we uh, <laughs> my family went to Disneyland like two weeks before all this crazy stuff started. Well, started in the U.S. I guess it was happening other places, and so my kids are gonna love that one because we can't get. I haven't seen there. William. Is he still carrying around his Pluto? Yeah. yeah. My um, three-year-old is a Mickey Mouse Like He fanatic. comes to my house with his big He's got his Mickey big and Mickey Minnie. and Minnie, and then his uh, souvenir from Disneyland was a gigantic stuffed Pluto, and it gets dragged around by his tail. He or, used to bring them yeah. all to my house. So See, I was there like well, a week or so before you, Jennifer. We were there, I think, the last week in February, somewhere along that. I forgot my name. Ah! But we were... Like, it was a good trip. But yeah. But we I feel like we went just in time before my, everything else. My my next vacation plan is in like early June, so let's see. Mine's at the middle end of June. Middle to end. So to be fair, we're just going up to Stanley. So uh that's not like crowds. Yeah. That's well a, I mean my family's flying, so we're gonna hope that we're still <laughs> flying somewhere at the in June. I just, I just gotta try. We, we better be still flying somewhere in June because I'm gonna need a vacation <laughs> for um, sure. It's the vacation of the year now. I uh, know. That's okay. It's, it's a beach. It's a beach. I'm going to a beach, <laughs> and it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> and I better still get to go. No, this is a good vacation year for me because we're going to another beach in October. So, right, life is good. That'll be fun. Yeah. Baby brother's getting married, so yeah, he decided to get married in Cancun. So and no, I'm not complaining. Unfortunately, that means I have to go to a adults-only, all-inclusive resort for a week in That's October. Too bad. It's it's really tragic, actually. I'm I'm pretty sad about it. No, you're not. I'm not sad about it. You're crippled. It forced me to be like. You know what, honey? We should take a vacation, just us. Yep. It's a good thing, especially after all this. I got three seams to go, y'all. Happy Easter, Tammy. Seriously, I miss having you guys here. Oh my gosh, right? Yeah, I really do. Well, yeah. Three we more pick seams. Pick up their orders and we wave and like... And then we're going to put these two things together and then we're going to be done. Right, which really means there's four seams, four seams to go. And we're and done. And this project is done. Mine is about hour or so I spent at home doing this this morning so that's really a quick project right they're fast right right so like I said let me you grab a bit of memorial day decor here you go let me grab a couple of crowns books just to show you yeah do that while Jen finishes this I'm almost done my finger right here like my thumb to make sure this is pushed upward underneath to alternate. So I'm really just using my fingers to make sure it's going the right direction. Okay so she's got fun ones like this is her quilts for kids where she does a lot of pixelated animals like the fox and the giraffe like they're just I love the hedgehog. The hedgehog's cute. And so there's she's got a lot of these patterns for free to like similar other places. Elephants. Just fun things you can do with the grid for kids. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of the first ones I ever saw of hers. And this is your trip around the world type quilt. Um, let's just show you how to do that, which is very cool and so much faster and more precise using this method. And so she's showing you how. Um, but see, there's your trip to Paris. Like she did this. And that is. 16 grids and you end up with a nice big beautiful quilt so if you use the two inch finish this makes a 90 by 90 quilt right there right and then everything is absolutely perfect and that's amazing to me because that's a lot of work to get these things perfect mm -hmm. so very cool although you can go further with this and do different things so this is a whole nother concept done with the grids and she's got border grids among other things right um 
but you can make row quilts and heart quilts and she's got I love this because it just feels so vintage in fact I have the diagonal panels to do this so it's just there's more there's more out there than just squares and I think that that's kind of neat to realize that you can do more than just squares with those kind of things. And this is her Seven Brothers book, and it's really similar to that. So, very cool. Different stuff that's not all just squares. But you can... But I think a square project is a great way to learn how to use right. the grid. Something like this is a really good um, intro. Jamie, great. Uh, Sarita, can you link her books? Ah, Sarita, to link the books. So you can look there. What she means what by she she'll does. ask is I'll ask she'll and I'll call the her shop Sarita over there and see if she'll the, the books. folds of fabric. Okay, so we're going to press this guy. And it really doesn't matter to what side. Nope. Uh, you might. Just I did. Two. That's good. No, that means. Okay. It doesn't matter. Matters. This way. I'm just going to clean up my mess because I only have to sew one more seam. In fact, I mean, I like sewing, but hey you guys, this is a fun one. And it's a great way to try out the grids and see if you're, if you like it, if you're interested or if you prefer Something traditional nice. piecing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love traditional piecing. I love traditional piecing, but good. for stuff like that, this is just so quick and easy. It's a nice shortcut. And let's and be honest, fast finishes these days are a mood booster. They are, you know, and I mean, it's fun to be working on some of like my bigger quilt projects, but I'm really loving my finishes. And sometimes I'm like, well, this has been great, but I need a break. So that's when I move on to one of the little projects that, you know, even if I don't sit down and just, oh, sorry, do it all in an hour or two, you know, I'll do it throughout the day. So I rarely just sit and sew for an hour, um, unless it's after 8.30 at night, because, you know, I have four kids. I'm so glad that people are liking their mystery bottles. Oh my gosh, you guys, picking those out was so stressful. Those are the four I showed them. Like, painfully stressful, because it's like, oh, I hope they like it. Is this what they meant by that? They said they like blue. What kind of blue? Anyway. It was really stressful. So I hope you love them. You know, if you don't, make some masks and give them to your neighbors or other people or, you know. Donate. Donate. I mean, don't make some baby quilts and donate them to a shelter. Yes. Okay. This beautiful tabletop we're lying here is a project we're going to do next week. Next week. It's it called is called Town, Town Square, Square Garden. Garden. And um, it's going to be fun. I am making the cream colorway. If you'd like a kit in the blue colorway, we can totally do that. Yeah, just send us a message and we'll send Sarita a message. Get it Sarita, done. Sarita, S A R I T A, at jkquilts.com. She's going to hate you for just doing that. That's okay. Actually, well, you know what? Let's. It's better than sending it to me or Liz because Sarita leaves her email open on the computer here all the time. So even when she's not here, we all have access to her email. Okay. Okay, so see how she's seaming this up? I'm going to seaming. stretch it just a little bit. All right. Do the adjusting game, and then we'll nest as we go. Um, right here, it's not a bad idea to use some pins. Because it should nest really well, but... Pretty close. Depending on how well I ironed it. But we'll be more accurate if we pin it. Which so, is kind of fun. This is the first time I'm we've used fold pins. I'm going to fold it. Actually, you don't need to pin that. No? At all. Oh, good. Eat it. Fine. I won't pin it. Pull it a little bit more when I press it. Yeah, pull that out. That's it. All good. All right. Let's Last do this. Scene. Hey, it's like four minutes to eight. We would have done it in under an hour. Yeah, see? Totally a quick project. We're specializing in projects under an hour this week. Well, I guess we got two hours or so, so I did spend some time on it. So this is from Robin Pickens' Abbey Rose Line, which you've heard us talk about like six times in the last four days. Well, it came. But it's because we all, this was, 
Usually when we order fabric, it's stuff that like one or two of us love. Right. It's like Liz wants this line or Sarita wants this line. And this Jen one we all three line. saw it and we're like, we want this line. <laughs> right. So we've all taken home projects and we're all working. Anyway. I haven't actually cut into mine yet. I haven't either because so I brought this home and I haven't touched it. Well, to be fair, I made the... I gave all the background to Chris, the kit. the link for this kit should be in the comments somewhere. Sarita posted it. I'll post it in the info. Sarita, Jen will post it in the info after we get Once I done. get my phone back. So, um, you can look back. And Jen's going to use the big iron and ironing board over there, which is great. Actually, bring me that iron. It's Just hotter. turn it down. Can you give it to me in the... Well, do it on the front. Yeah, that's what I meant. Press better. For my top press. Because I want the, the interfacing iron. can get a little... What do you call it? If you iron the interfacing too hot, it can get kind of... It can shrivel. Shirley. It doesn't handle the high heat so as well. The finished pressing is great to do on the front because you can get nice and hot on the front with the cotton. So, mm -hmm. Oh, good. Glad you found it. I think my things at home were a tiny bit smaller than yours. But that's okay. It's forgiving. It's pretty awesome that way. It's gonna look a little curled up. It'll be better once I attach it to a back. Right. Or you add really, you know, know, or you add your border. Or add a border. But there we go, guys. We got a at home Bonnie and Camille flag made with two uh easy piecing grids from Ten Sisters. And we're done. We made a flag tonight, guys. And it's all scrappy and it's adorable. And I'm you can be busy excited to cuts. finish it. And I'm cutting apparently going to cut, cut a few kits for it for you guys on Monday. Yeah. So, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like it. Right. I think so, it's cute. Um, anything else? Did I forget? Any questions? Are we good? Yeah. Let's see. Muscles, grids. Uh, does the plug on that doorbell iron make you nervous? No, not really. No. no, it's just older. It's got the one thing you want to check, or that we check too with the ones that we sell, is that the cord is in good shape and that the prongs and everything are in good shape. Right. Uh, we haven't had any problems with we, the plugs. Yeah, as long as the fabric cords, if they, some of them have fabric cords, yeah. some have plastic cords. Um, but this is a, I mean, this is a plastic cord, but it's still very supple. Yeah. The fabric but, cords, like, as long when as I'm no done with strong, this, they're great. Um, I, I just going to unplug, unplug it. Because that whole plug comes off the back, and then it folds flat. And then I can plop this down, and it folds flat. So I'm going to flip it over for now, because it, it needs to cool off. It takes a minute for things really to cool off. But yeah. Anyway. But yeah, well, thank you guys for joining us. Mm -hmm. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Although it feels like a real day. And, um, <laughs> no, I didn't have to do school with my kids today. That's true. That makes it And weekend. have Remember a great Sunday. Easy. Have a great Easter or Passover or whatever. Passover was Thursday. Oh, pa anyway, sorry. I should know this. But Passover was Thursday. I'm totally all over the place. But have a good Easter or just Sunday or whatever it is you're doing. And we will see you. We will be back Tuesday night. night. And we'll post a schedule. Either tomorrow or Monday morning. That's your father-in-law. <laughs> um, Nancy, I don't know that it's better that they come undone or not undone, come undone. It's just the one I the one I personally use doesn't come undone. Yeah. So it's a great iron. I don't know that one's better than the other. No. To be honest, I think that they're both about the same. Personal opinion. But yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, just have them. Yeah, so yeah, so printed interfacing, like there's bag patterns and all sorts of things. So this is just a grid printed interfacing. So yeah, that's exactly what it's like, Debbie. You are correct. All right, well, happy Easter, guys. Have a good weekend, and we will see you back here on Tuesday, Tuesday night. I'm going to hopefully post the schedule for next week, tomorrow, hopefully. Well, for sure Monday. Count on it by Monday. Because, well, like I said, I'm hoping to take tomorrow off. But... Have a good weekend. Any questions, let us know. We'll see ya. Bye.